If you're like me, you've wondered, how does light cut metal? It doesn't really make any sense. You all know this flashlight right here is absolutely useless against the steel. We're gonna go through and explain exactly how lasers work right now. I found some things around camp to use as visual aids to explain everything about a laser. Hello. <laughs> We're gonna go from the quantum physics to full-blown steel destruction. So by the end of this video, you guys will understand how a $100,000 machine vaporizes metal instantly. All right, guys, I gotta be honest with you. For the longest time, I did not know that laser was an acronym. I just thought it was something that Dr. Evil put on the heads of sharks to be extra evil. But apparently it stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. All that is science speak for we trick photons into getting super excited so that we can cut steel. First part of this, which is the diode. There is basically two materials. One is a P type and one is an N type. And basically what that means is one has extra electrons and one doesn't have enough. The diode is what actually makes the laser light, just like a LED is a light emitting diode. All you guys are familiar with LEDs at this point. Ooh, I just got bit by a fly. They work like an electromagnet, where an electromagnet, you're using electricity to create a magnetic force, right? So if you pass electricity through an electromagnet, the result is they draw together and stick. So. Well, hopefully better than that. Stick. That's decent. So instead of using sticking force, basically you sandwich this P-type and N-type together. And when you pass electricity through them, they create photons. And that photon is in the 900 nanometer range, which is great for light, but it's still not ready to cut metal. It's a lot like you know, just turning on this thing, the light is scattering everywhere. So they use like really common fiber optic cable to collect this light into a stream and carry that forward into the pump. This right here basically represents our, well, I mean, this is our power packs. This is our electricity that's feeding into a diode. And when we pass electricity through that diode, it emits a visible spectrum of light that we collect in this fiber optic cable. There is a limitation for LEDs and it's that they can only be so many watts. I think about 50 watts is the limitation for the LED lights. So if you want a 3000 watt laser, you're gonna have to combine, I don't know if anybody can do the math, but I'll throw it up on the screen. So 20 of these packs would get you a thousand watts. That would be a one kilowatt laser. 40 of these packs would be two kilowatt. 60 of these packs would be three kilowatts, so on and so forth. So you have to generate a ton of these LED, well, they're not LEDs, a ton of these diode packs. All these different fiber cables are traveling through the resonator box and combining together into one solid stream that is now more focused, but still not focused enough to cut through metal. All right, you guys are gonna have to do a little bit of translation here. This log represents all of those fiber optic cables coming together into a regular silica glass fiber optic cable that you guys are probably all pretty familiar with at this point. This little pine needle represents the doped ytterbium core, which travels straight down the center of this bundle. So this glass out here is really good at collecting all those different light sources because you can't jam all this light into this little tiny pine needle right away. It takes a little bit of time. So you coil this up in a perfect coil and that gives all of the photons enough time to bang around inside of here until they find this pine needle core. And as soon as they hit the pine needle core, this is where the amplification happens and the quantum mechanics as well. So this quantum, sorry, this doped core right here actually amplifies the frequency of these 900 nanometer photons. Great way to think about the doped ytterbium core is like a quartz watch movement, right? So you probably know that quartz crystals resonate at a specific frequency when excited with an electrical current. And just like the quartz resonates at a known frequency that you can set time to, the ytterbium doped core also 
resonates to a specific frequency that can set the wavelength of the laser light that's coming down because we have the quantum side of this is where we've produced a photon but it also resonates at a frequency just like light. So it's a physical thing and a light wave at the same time. Um, and I don't totally understand that because it's quantum mechanics and I'm just a welder, but the quartz crystal in a watch is probably the best way to conceptualize the ytterbium doped core. And as soon as they engage with this core, not only do they get stuck inside of it because of the reflective qualities of the fiber optic assembly, but they also create a clone of themselves that is now vibrating at a higher frequency above 1000, which is now capable of cutting metal. So you produce a lower frequency light, and then as it bangs around in here on its way down to your laser, as soon as it touches this core, it turns into over 1000 nanometer light and gets stuck inside of here because this core is less reflective than the perfectly reflective outer coating. This is just a good way to visualize what's going on inside that fiber optic cable as it's trying to search for that ytterbium core. Some of the light is getting absorbed into it and some of it is bouncing around it. And every time that photon tries to escape, it hits this perfect reflection and drives right back into this core. And now we're ready to talk about the culminating lens. Just don't leave the box out. So the lens assembly is represented by the magnifying glass, and this is our steel that is sitting on the machine ready to be cut. So you see as the lens travels down, beam gets wider. As the lens travels up, it gets more concentrated and focused, and eventually build up enough heat where we light the match or you vaporize the metal. So that's essentially how your lens assembly is working. There's multiple lenses in the culminating assembly, but this is a good way to visualize it for you guys. The only thing to keep in mind is we use the entire sun and this huge lens. Well, that's kind of cool. Hello. Uh, but you guys are starting with a really, really small sun. Imagine how much more concentrated the light is in the laser compared to this big old sucker dog right here. I really hope that summarizes lasers for you. I had a lot of fun researching this topic. Um, I didn't know all this stuff before I decided to do this video, but it's cool to understand what exactly is going on and why you have some of the problems you might have with them. So if you want to know more about what it costs to run one of these machines, visit HeroMachineCo.com or check out this video somewhere over here. Other than that, I'm Adam. Welcome to Hero Machine Co. I'm going to go catch up with my kids at camp. Later.